What's up, children? Richard Hart here on the Make Elon Musk Rich. Give him engagement. Give him likes. Give him followers. Give him free content unpaid to promote his platform. Dear Elon, please take our sacrifice. Please take our effort and our labor to make your platform more engaging. Pretty please. And may you shine your light upon us occasionally if we get enough views or followers so that you may step in here and say the same stuff you've said a hundred times before. Thank you, sir. So like, yeah, you guys that are listening, if you want to make the world a better place, and you should first read my book. It's free, but if you're too dumb and too lazy to read it, it's called SciVive, S C I V I V. If you're too dumb and too lazy to read it, the free book that I wrote for you six years ago, why don't you listen to the audiobook for free on YouTube? Type SciVive Audiobook, S C I V I V E. But if you're too stupid, too lazy to listen to the audiobook or to read the book, then uh, I'll just give you a little, a little bit of tidbits, a little bit of easy advice. You don't make the world a better place by listening to other people talk smack all the time and say the same stuff you've already heard them say 20 other times. You don't make the world a better place by getting more likes and follows unless you're actually dedicated to it. And then you might get like viral or whatever. But for the majority of mediocre, barely there, barely have any followers, guys, if you stopped broadcasting, who would notice? Who cares? Do something productive. Do something useful. So, for instance, I would put, like, Hex Direct Mail or other, like... I mean, it's an exception, right? Like, the community, I think the majority of users to cryptocurrencies come from word of mouth. And so there's a place for it. But how much of you listening to someone else's Twitter space is you on-ramping new users? Exactly 0%. And how much of you learning about free speech law is helping you on-ramp new users? And how much of you complaining about spaces or complaining about whether you got a microphone or not, how much of that is on-ramping new users? How much of that is building new products? How much of that is making you more fit, more wealthy, more healthy? It's just news porn. Instead of reading the newspaper and wasting your time doing that or learning fan fiction, fantasy football crap or whatever other time sink, time waste, poor excuse for living a real life crap you're doing, Twitter Spaces is basically just that. It's just you watching another alternate form of news, and after you're done watching it, you're going to suck your thumb and shove it up your butt anyway. You're not going to do anything with the knowledge. It's not, it's not worth learning. It's not worth knowing. Why are you listening to Twitter spaces with a bunch of guys that haven't done much with their life nagging about stuff when you could uh, read my book, Sci-Vive, it's free, or, or any one of a hundred other good self-help books, all of which will leave you better off than yet another news outrage porn event useless. Now, I usually do not go and talk other places because I always get banned because what the people that run the place want and what I want are different. So for instance, if I post on a Rolex watch forum, I'm going to get banned because I have too many watches. They hate me. They're angry at me. I have $10 million of watches. They're very, very upset at me because I make them feel like crap. Why? Because I exist. And I've done better than they've done. And I'm a better human being than they are. And the deeper they look, the better I see, or better they see that I dominate them. Uh, they get super mad about it. Super butthurt. And so I don't post on watch forms anymore. Because I don't like getting banned. So, you know, if my, my posts are going to get out there, someone that uh, has less to lose, or their time is worth less, or they're just, you know, that's their fetish or whatever. If you want to post my content in the watch form, you go ahead and do that. And if, uh, if you want to take my good ideas, which has been the same good ideas for a decade and spread them like freedom of movement. You know, I know a guy that had a sacrifice phase to prove that you believe in freedom of speech, but it's funny. I don't get mentioned in these freedom of speech things. And I know a guy that raised 27 million for medical reach, but medical research me, uh, but I don't get mentioned in the medical research conversations. I'm like, all right, that's cool. <laughs> so when I, when I, I don't fall for the drama and the bait and like, 
So when someone says something, so when someone slights me and, and doesn't do me a solid, right, and treats me poorly, and then trolls about it for engagement bait, I don't reward it. I don't reward trolling or treating me poorly with views, likes, subscribers, any of that stuff. So as a person that I'm not going to say has mastered, but is pretty good at getting people outraged enough to look to see that there's something more, I don't let my followers fall for that crap, which is why I don't follow anybody. I don't follow Elon. So you're not going to see tweets from him because I'm following him. And I don't follow anyone except people that are 100% bout it, bout it, about stuff I care about. I don't follow Vitalik. I don't, I don't care. I don't follow these people because I want to protect my users from the stupid crap that I see them saying sometimes. So you're still going to end up seeing some of their stupid crap because you probably follow other people that will fall for their engagement bait. I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan at all. So, you know, here's what's funny. <laughs> Let's take BitBoy. BitBoy used to promote a lot of garbage, a lot of trash. Used to promote FTX, used to promote a lot of trash. But then he stopped promoting trash, and he started doing things better. And he started like, hey, let's, let's get a good bill. Let, let's, you know, let's make uh, crypto better from the legal perspective. Okay, well, that's an honest, about as honest and useful as could be intention. Now, how it'll work out, I don't know. But I hope it works out amazingly. You know, so someone trying to give crypto a better, fair shake. I love the sound of that. Building free and open source software to control money. I mean, on the space, Elon said, controlling the money is the most important thing. And you're like, yep, yeah, we know, Elon. True. That's why we've been at this for 10 years. In my case, uh, early 2011, so, I don't know, 12 years. So now... What do I care about? What am I focused on? I care about Pulse Chain launching. I care about Pulse X launching. I care about Hex. And I care about reaping the rewards of being right about everything. I'm the one that told you to take your money off BlockFi. I'm the one that told you to take your money off Celsius years earlier. No one listened. I was right. They were wrong. My followers are saved. And everyone else got wrecked. But is there a single news article or interview about that? Nope. Not a single one. Fine, that's okay. Those nude ar articles don't last that long anyway. So yeah, it'd be nice to get the respect, right? My 10 minutes of respect for something that I've worked so hard for. But I don't really care. Fine, you don't want to give me the respect for that? It's all good. I care about the things that have lasting, durable value. And Twitter spaces don't. This recording we're doing right here, no one's ever going to listen to it again. No one cares. This is not evergreen content. This does not get search engine optimization. This does not get fed more views in the future from YouTube. This does not get fed more views in the future from Twitter. This is trash. Like This is the lowest tier, ephemeral, non-evergreen content waste of time. And so like, when I'm invited to these spaces and they start to suck, I peace out. Why am I going to let my followers get sucked into this news watching porn circle jerk not you're not doing anything with your life waste of time you're not getting anything done in your life listening to these stupid spaces you're not you're not going to go change the first amendment law you're not going to go sue the government it's none of those things are happening like what, what are you what are you getting done what are you getting done watching the news you're not getting anything done and so where could you have learned this advice? Oh, by golly, it's all in Vive already. But you idiots won't even read that. <laughs> so like, here I am it, issuing you the same advice I gave you 10 years ago now. Um, and it's just like, I don't know, man. I can't, I can't say 10 years ago. Like, you couldn't, have, you couldn't have read the free version of Survive until, say, 2017, 2018, something like that. But I mean, go check the... Go check the timestamps, I guess. So yeah, long story short, don't fall for other people's engagement bait. You're nothing to them, but something to get to like and subscribe and increase their, their algorithmic score by interacting with them more. They don't care about you. They don't like you. You're nothing more to them than uh, basically an NPC in a video game, and they're just trying to get more likes and follows and subscribes. And here's the funny part. <laughs> they're so stupid for doing that because... 
like one, my community by and large is immune to the stupidity that they would try and lure you into. So what are they going to lure you into buying a terrible coin? You're probably not going to fall for it because you've been listening to me for so long. And so like you guys trying to bait my users into liking and following you and stuff, go waste your time baiting, I don't know, Dogecoin users. Elon's a Dogecoin user. Go get him. Go get go get Elon's engagement. He he likes inferior technology. Yeah. <laughs> Dogecoin that has no smart contracts, no on-chain exchange. Uh oh, but Richard, you're just projecting. <laughs> no. It sucks balls. And it sucks it is always gonna suck balls. It's a it's, it's a logo change. No thank you. So yeah. I just wanted to say my uh my two cents on that. Because I see I see otherwise like good hexagons falling for the troll bait. Like how many times do I have to remind you guys that we ghost trolls? How many times? And I and I guess I I semi fell for it because I didn't mention anybody. But then even when I mention anybody, other people are like, oh, oh, Richard's talking about, oh my God, I've got to get in there and start tagging and start promoting the troll and, and help help get him more engagement. What? No, guys. No, no. That's not how we do it. Focus on what matters. Pulse Chain launches. PulseSec launches. Hex does better. If, if everyone had uh, bought Hex instead of these things that went to zero, imagine how much higher the hex price would be. And imagine how much more yield everyone would be paying their users. But instead of taking the thing that earns yield algorithmically, they decided to do it with all the humans involved, and all the humans lose all the money. <laughs> Oops. It's, uh, it's hilarious to me. And then, by the way, the, the troll bait that like, I promote hex all the time, no, I don't. I barely talk about it. Like I, I say the minimum possible stuff, like, I'm, when I'm talking about free speech, I'm talking about free speech. I'm not. I'm not talking about like, oh, did you did you know you could make thirty eight percent APY or did, did you know you could buy at ninety five percent discount stuff like that? No, I didn't say nothing like that. They're stupid. Just troll bait. So I don't know. Let someone else talk here. Let's let's let Hivid Hex speak. I'm probably not saying her name right. No, she doesn't want to talk. She doesn't even have her hand up. They don't have their hand up. I see random thumbs. Is that a hand up? Is, is this crap just busted? Let's take a look here. Mm. Yeah, I don't see no. Oh, I see a hand. All right, let's see who we got here. Come on up, buddy. I have a loud speaker. It's going good. I'm just helping my followers stop falling for troll bait and stop wasting their lives watching the news, basically. Go on-ramp new users. Go build stuff. Stop falling for troll bait. I honestly don't think that... As much as I know that... We love listening to you. It ain't gonna work for us, man. Yeah, just no. because I think we all just fall for it. And so how? what's the easiest way to not fall for the troll bait besides just get rid of them? Well, I mean... I mean, what I do is I just ghost people. So, like, oh, you're trolling for engagement. If you have high follower account, I just hide your posts because it works both ways. So, if someone has high follower account, I'll let them try and bait my users for engagement, but then I'll hide their posts. And so, in theory, I'm not exactly sure how the algo works, but in theory, their users will see them trying, maybe. Um, but then my users won't have the misfortune. And so, it's like, uh, it's like, uh, it's like jujitsu. Like you're trying to, they want to punk you for your audience. You want to punk them for their audience. But in the end, what is moral and ethical is where do the users end up, right? So I know where my users end up. <laughs> my users end up in the 100% flawless, perfect uptime, 100% hold your own keys, free coins out the yin yang, free airdrops out the yin yang. That's where my users end up. And where other guys' users end up is, like, mm, Rectville, you know? So, like, so many guys just disappeared. Like, I used to talk to Roger Ver, argue with him. He's gone. He's not here anymore. Trace Meyer, where'd he go? Gone. Andreas Antonopoulos, that won't let booth girls at events that he talks at. Uh, Anti-women's rights. Gone. N not around anymore. Uh, the dude that founded Luna, gone. Three Arrows Capital, Suzu or Zusu, gone. His partner, Kyle Davies, gone. Celsius Mashinsky, gone. Um, 
other dudes that got wrecked. Like I haven't seen or heard anything from uh, that guy was unreasonably long Ethereum at the top. What was his name? I don't even remember. It's some media channel crap. And so half of these guys have me blocked. So is it worth trying to save those? So like the Mario Nayball spaces, all those spaces are basically just bait. No, so like, is it just not even no, worth trying to so go like in there? Mario had Mario has a PFP profile pick of uh, an NFT, right? And he used to do a bunch of ICO stuff and promote ICOs and all that. And he probably still does. And so, but when all that died and you don't have anything going on, you're like, all right, well, I don't have anything going on. I guess uh, I'll I'll be more of an influencer. Cool, let's go, let's go be more influencer. Oh, look, there's this new platform that doesn't have much going on yet called Twitter Space. Let's see if we can make that shit work. And, you know, he's pivoting, right? It's just like Kim. Kim used to do file sharing, and he stopped. And then he did, like, outrage marketing because they were going to extradite him. Then he stopped. And now he just hates America because, well, he's got good reason to. They want to put him in prison, so, like... You know, like it's uh and so people are just pivoting, right? So they're 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 going into new things because the other things didn't work. I'm not pivoting into fuck all. Everything I did worked perfect. <laughs> so like, yeah, we got hundred and fifty thousand stakers, we've got hundred percent perfect flawless uptime, we'll have testnet v three. I'm not giving you any time estimates, but the devs give me time estimates. I think they're wrong, of course. Um and so, like, my plans are working great. So Pulse Chain and Pulse X are going to launch. Hex is doing fabulous. My book has been free, and, you know, I'm retweeting um, people, reading snippets of it all the time. Hopefully you idiots that are listening will read it, actually read it. You ain't got nothing better to do, man. It's bear market. Go read it. Free. It's free for you. Took me a lot of work staring at a screen to make that free for you. A lot of work. Um, yeah, and like, it's just, why would you, I'll put it to you this way. Not your keys, not your coins, not your space, not your mic. And then when the, when the platform bans you, not your comms channel, not your comms. And so it's just different levels of abstraction on who can screw you. So why should I, Richard Hart, the self-help author, genius, called the Bitcoin price top on the day, two different cycles, created a coin that went up 10,000 fold in price, gave it away for free to Bitcoin holders, predicted all these things would fail, and they did. Why should I ever wait for permission or wait to be handed a mic or like it just, why? Why? Why suck middleman D? I'd rather do other stuff, you know? So I go and speak the truth and, you know, don't over talk other people and, you know, I don't ever need to get kicked from a space because I never talk too much. I wait for the right moment to speak, and then I speak, and then I let other people talk. I'm a very friendly dude. Like, I don't I don't uh, abuse the space. Now, I call it stupid when I see it, and there's a lot of stupid, but you can't not do that, right? So, like, I, I crush these idiots. Is this reasonable to do so? So, it's like... Anytime, like, I care about the things that I know are going to have lasting value, and these Twitter spaces don't mean crap. This, by the way, this is just a replay. Okay, let me let you guys in on some inside baseball here. There was a project out of Silicon Valley called Clubhouse. You've probably never heard of it because they failed. And Clubhouse invented this idea of Twitter spaces, and then Twitter spaces had to copy it from them and add it to their platform. Just like Instagram copied Snapchat's features with video and scrolling through constant videos all the time. So Twitter stories are a copy-paste of Snapchat. And Twitter, I'm sorry, Instagram stories. Twitter spaces is a copy-paste of Clubhouse. Clubhouse sucked. Clubhouse failed. I'm not sure spaces will do much better. The software is extremely bad. Like extremely bad. Which is why a couple crypto guys can get together and get Elon in their space because it sucks so bad it doesn't have any other audience. There's no other good space he could join because no one else cares because it's basically a failed platform currently. Like Twitter spaces is so bad that Elon's happy to join it because there's nowhere else him to go on there. I assure you, if there was a celebrity chat, he would choose the celebrity spaces over the weird crypto dude spaces. <laughs> like, it's like a no-brainer. So if, if my followers... 
are are like critically motivated to do social media things this platform might give you a short term bump um or like the spaces part of this neighborhood of twitter might give you a short term bump but i don't think it's going to be sustainable i think that this is going to fail quite similarly to how clubhouse failed and by the way all the stuff we're doing right now we can do on telegram for free and it works better and it supports video chat so like much right? better so like why like why would i go punk my users and troll them and and put them on this inferior platform oh because elon might shine upon us and say the same crap we've heard him say a hundred times before and you're like bro you're so elon you don't support longevity right you prefer we die correct elon you support dogecoin which makes everyone suck middle down D because you can't de-risk. There's no smart contracts and it's just a, a JPEG change and has huge, massive centralized ownership for people that don't like that stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. And and ever, you got everyone wrecked. And when you when you went on uh, and and you tested the liquidity on Bitcoin, you secretly bought it and then said it was great and then let everyone buy their Teslas with it. And then you secretly sold it and said you were testing liquidity and then publicly savaged it and says, oh my God, we didn't use less electricity. Oh yeah, you're a rocket scientist. You didn't know it used electricity. You're actually a computer scientist as well with a degree and you didn't know it used electricity. Nah, you pumped it and dumped it, bro. Let's be serious. And so I'm willing to take his pump and dump crap because he's doing good with rockets. He's doing good with cars, but he's not doing good with crypto. He's not doing good with longevity. And uh, he's actually not doing good with free speech. So he banned Kanye for something that he shouldn't have been banned for. Elon's specific words were, we're going to have Twitter be a proxy for what's legal. If it's legal and you're not going to go to jail for it, you should be able to do it on Twitter. Well, pro posting swastikas is not something you go to jail for. Or else every, every middle schooler that draws one will be in jail, right? And, and by the way, like he, and he said something so stupid. Like he said he was incited to violence against Kanye, not against Jews. So like <laughs> you being violent and wanting to harm people using their free speech is probably an indictment of you, bro. Not so much the person using the speech. Now he was probably just being funny and like, you know, making a joke or whatever. But look, I, this hero worship crap, everybody's got it wrong somewhere. Almost everybody. I think I have it right more than most. So, you know, you, you go and you look at people's history and you're just like, well, yeah, he's got rockets right. He's got crypto wrong. Yes, he's trying to make free speech better. But yes, he just banned a dude for something that's doing something obviously legal. Uh, that's not consistent. You know, and you just, you just got to call, call people out. And if they're smart and they're honest about what they want, they'll appreciate it. So all I wanted to tell Elon, the only thing I wanted to tell him was this very simple logical construction. Elon, do you believe the only reason free speech is viable is because it might make society better? Easy yes momentum question. Elon, do you believe that in order for free speech to make society better, someone has to use their speech to promote better ideas? Another obvious yes. And then here comes the kill shot. Why not directly promote the better ideas and not leave it up to chance that someone uses the free speech to promote them? Very easy kill shot. So he's getting extremely poor returns on his investment as far as spreading good ideas go. He spent 44, let's, you know, around $44 billion to buy Twitter. How much actual promotion of good ideas could that have purchased? Instead of creating a free-for-all where bad ideas get promoted about as much as good ideas and you're back to where you started. So it's like... Free speech is a poor excuse for promoting the good ideas. And so the good ideas need to be promoted. And it's just unfortunate that sometimes you have to fall back to the fallback position of, hey, uh, can I please have some free speech so I can promote the better ideas, please? Like, why is crypto banned everywhere? Is that fair? Is that okay? The best performing asset class that's ever existed in the history of mankind. You can't talk about it. It's banned everywhere. What? That seems like a load of crap. That seems very unfair. Very extremely unfair. And it's the world that we live in. So, you know, look, in the end, I, I, I don't know what the magic switch is I have to pull to get more people to hear the good things that I have to teach them. But if they just are able to learn the things without knowing I ever exist, I'll settle for that. But I haven't found a way to do that. 
like my, I, I haven't found a way to get my ideas to propagate without me attaching some dramatic crap to them because people care more about cult of personality stuff than they care about the stuff. So for instance, if you listen to half the guys, when Elon comes on, all they're trying to do is get more followers out of it. Hey, like, and subscribe and retweet me a lot so that Elon will see. No, nah, dude, you just want to get more followers and retweets and crap. And you're probably not even going to monetize them well. And you're probably not going to even do anything good for them. So you're also wasting your time. You're just too dumb to know it. You know, like, like all the, <laughs> all those guys that promoted FTX to you and made all those referral commissions. How did that work out for them and you? If they left their com referral commissions on FTX, it worked out very poorly for them. If they just took the, the, the you getting meat ground into the meat grinder and kept that profit for themselves uh, and took it off the platform, I guess they got your money. Uh, but couldn't they just promote something that sucked less? I don't know. I don't know, man. I, I, I would hope that they could. I mean, wouldn't you rather get a job at like an office than straight up scam people? It seems like office job would be a better choice. There's upward mobility there too, if you're not a dumb dumb. So like I, I don't want the the best thing I can do for you guys is, you know, you've got extra time, you want to spend it on Twitter, fine. I get it. It's it's hard to find something else to like consume all your extra time. I get it. Don't fall for engagement bait. S know what your purpose is. Are you out here to promote freedom of speech, freedom of movement, perfect flawless perfect flawless operating cryptocurrencies? life-changing opportunity. Hey, what if you could buy the best performing asset class for 90% off? Wow. That seems like better than paying 10 times higher a year and a half ago. Um, yeah. Stay on target, you know, don't fall for the bait. And even the people baiting you fell for the bait themselves. They've chosen a stupid path. Hey, remember that guy that had like the most successful clubhouse room? No, you don't. You never heard of him. No one cares. Hey, remember the guy who like the most the second most successful MySpace page? Nope. No one cares. Doesn't matter. Totally irrelevant and gone. And so, like, I keep coming back to this. Direct mail? I love it. I love direct mail. So if any of you guys want to get the word out about stuff you care about, direct mail is the only thing I know of that goes around all these censors. Can't censor it. Beautiful. I mean, I guess they could censor if they wanted to. If you just dropped it off in one place. But if you're willing to drop it off more than one place, how are they going to censor that? Right? So, beautiful. And then uh, build products. Right? So, building products and promoting the products, that stuff has lasting value. You know, once someone's a hexagon, they tend to be a hexagon for a really long time. Well, that's awesome. But this Twitter space stuff or, or falling for engagement bait, it doesn't go anywhere. It's, it's totally useless. And I would feel quite similar about this is if, if YouTube, one of the four times they banned me, what if they just left me banned one of those times? Man, how much would I regret having put all that effort in? I would have greatly regretted the effort that I put into that platform, all the content that I gave them for free that they get rich on that I do not. I don't make any money on that platform. I don't have ads turned on. I've never received any money from Google. So, like, you know, it, it's, it's all fun and games till you just get straight up banned. And like, that's part of the reason why I like Telegram so much. It's, it's given our users the most autonomy and it's given me the ability or rather admins, the ability to like delete the most spam. I begged, I, I begged Elon. I'm like, bro, just give me a button to hide block and report spam. That's all I need, bro. Just give me a single click. I don't need eight clicks every piece. Every time someone spams me, I, I can't do eight clicks. It's silly. And, and why do I have to hide? Like, I want to hide all their posts. I don't want to just hide one post because they're, they're tactical about it. I can't ban them too early because then their post shows up through the lag. So like I'll hide some of their posts and then I'll block them. But then some of the posts I didn't see yet won't be hidden. Like I've basically given up on it. Like I can't, I can't spend the time. My options are either authorize an app that can tweet on my behalf or authorize a human that can tweet on my behalf or just let everyone spam. And I would rather have everyone spam then let someone else, uh, you know, be able to violate my account. So let's say that you were to get banned completely off of every platform. What would your next move be? I don't know, dude. I, I really think direct mail is pretty cool. 
<laughs> and and like you also, it's like it all comes down to SMS. This is this is what the proof of work for social media is. Social media proof of work is do you have a unique phone number that doesn't have 10 accounts on it already? And if you already if you have a unique phone number that already, you know, doesn't have 10 accounts on it, then you can make a new account and you can post. People see your posts. And so, you know, I see posts from new accounts all the time. It's the horror of my day. And they all have weird names from weird countries where SMS numbers are cheaper. Another thing Elon's going to do that's wrong that I posted to him, I'm like, don't do that. Do not make Twitter cost the same across all countries. No. I eat, I get spam more when you make spam cheaper because it's cheaper to buy SMSs in the third world or to hack accounts in the third world. So the majority of people that are abusing my users by spamming them under my threads have weird third world names. It's not an accident. And so I don't want more of that. You want it, you want it to like go kick off in that country? Hey, bro, make a uh, thatcountry.twitter.com and they all go there. Easy. Like, why, why are you pretending we all speak the same language? We don't. We really do not. <laughs> like, so it's, uh, he's a smart dude. He wants to do good stuff, but he's got a lot, like a lot of stuff backwards. You know, like he, he could do better in a lot of places. So like, as, so your question was, what was your question again? If you get banned off of every single yeah. platform, what would your next move be? Well, I don't, I don't think I'm going to get banned off every single platform. And if I did, I would probably just make more accounts and post more content that other people would post. And then it would be basically like, it's some, it, you can't stop spam. Why? Because basically it comes down to, you want people that don't know each other to be able to talk to each other. Okay. Well, then that's what spam is. As a matter of fact, the, the guy that co-founded uh, Reddit had a great thread on this. He got a great Twitter thread on this, actually. And he's like, yeah, actually, there's nothing against the law about spam. We just don't like it. It's not illegal, right? Like, hey, a company wants to sell their crap, right? So they tell you their crap exists. Well, seems, you know, like multi-billion dollar, trillion dollar industry around that. And, you know, in some cases, it does make the world better. So... I'm not, I'm not sure where those cases are anymore, but it's like, is Coca-Cola ads really making the world better? Mm, maybe it's making dentist lives better, <laughs> but like, you know, by and large, the number of ads that do harm to you compared to the number of ads that do good to you, it's probably heavily tilted towards harm. So, I mean, maybe an ad. So when I always get mail from the bank that says, hey, take out a loan, take out this, and they're all predatory loans, but, you know, we get that mail that says, hey, here's hex.com. And the hex.com mails some people will post on Twitter, hey, this is spam. No, that's the thing that saved my life right, right yeah. now. Yeah, it's true. So, like, I just, it's it's another form of, like, news porn. Like, what would happen if you got banned everywhere? I'm not going to get banned everywhere. You know, like, enough people, apparently, that work at Google like me that they keep unbanning me. Cool, thanks, guys. It'd, it'd be cool if we didn't have to beg you to unban me, but at least getting unbanned is nice. And if one day they don't, well, hey, man, those same jerk-offs that are posting a 1,000 spam threads under my post, it's probably not too hard to figure out how they're doing that, you know? So it's, it's like I, pref I prefer to be friendly. I prefer to be nice. But everyone seems to be not nice. Everyone seems to be not friendly. Everyone seems to want to promote harm instead of good. And at some point you're like, well, uh... <laughs> I'm going to give you guys a minute to chat amongst yourselves. I'll be right back. And then, Havid, when he, when he comes back, we'll have you make your question that did you I, had. I see you got did your I, hand did I already up. make someone a co-host? Do we have a co-host here? You haven't brought anyone as co-host well, Who yet? wants to be a co-host? I can co-host. Katie, you want to be a co-host? Yes, please. Mm, invite co-host. <laughs> Send co-host invite. There you go. Be right back. Yeah, let people up as you wish. On it, boss. Twitter is super glitchy. 
just to let everybody know in the room. <laughs> and if anyone hasn't checked out the SciVive, SciVive is actually really good. You can find it at SciVive.net. You can find it in t.me backslash SciVive. Most of us already know about that. If you haven't checked out Hex Postcards, t.me backslash Hex Postcards. And if anybody doesn't know already, if you actually search for things in the Twitter algorithm that you want on your feed, it actually well overruns the feed. So, like, yes, if you're following people, your feed does get full up of things that they're promoting or that they're tweeting or that they're interacting with. But if you constantly search for things that you want to see, your thread gets full of that stuff, the, all the other crap and junk on Twitter. Hi, Buck. Oh, hi, Katie. <clears throat> I just wanted to say, I think Richard's been doing an awesome job in these Twitter spaces the past couple of weeks. Um, and I really want to encourage him to keep going and talking about his values. I've been listening to him since 2017. And the thing that's always attracted me to Richard is he has a strong integrity. Uh, he's okay saying something that's unpopular if he thinks he's right. Um, and his values are something that I think will resonate with people all across crypto not just people in the hex community right now, especially the zeitgeist at the moment. It is uh, as such where the failure of these uh, CFI shadow banks is the perfect opportunity for Richard to talk about these values, which he's uh, told us about for the past, you know, five years, you know, control your crypto uh, rights to free speech, freedom of assembly, all these important things. So I think I just want to encourage him to keep going um, and don't worry about what happened today. Um, just keep talking about your values. You, you don't even need to shell your products. Uh, your values are amazing and people need to hear them right this moment. And they'll be receptive to that. Thank you, Richard. How are you, Hope? Hi. Hi, I'm good. I, uh, I went to an IHOP and I ate very quickly because I realized that Richard started his own space. So... You know, that was the uh, fastest sausage I've ever eaten. Anyway, um, but, um, <laughs> but um, I thought I think it is fascinating to where when uh, generally when we are in these anti-censorship spaces, um, financially, DeFi crypto is going to be um, part of the decentral or decentral uh, censorship resistance. Right. Unfortunately, some of the people that are the most knowledgeable in that censorship resistance um, based upon the blockchain are developers themselves. So there's a conundrum here where you wonder how you can get these people who are knowledgeable on the subject, professionals at it, to speak without shilling their tokens. And I mean with uh, Richard Hart, Jack Levin as well. Um, I'm not really surprised and I don't really blame people for trying to sort of not have them in a space because of that fear that their token might be shilled. But unfortunately, the people that are most knowledgeable on this space are the ones who've developed their own tokens. So you're kind of in a catch-22 situation where you must have them in the space if you want people to be able to truly talk about these decentralized uh, currencies. Yeah, but like, who doesn't have something to shill, right? So like, uh, the troll guy shills BCH. The uh, Elon Musk guy trolls the dog coin. Uh, Mario promotes NFTs. I promote Hex, Pulse Chain, Pulse X. Everyone's got a coin. Everybody. Who doesn't have one? I mean, like, I guess uh, Joe Biden doesn't have one. But I'm not sure he's even a conscious human being. Like, I'm not sure he, he can know how to get yeah. on the internet. He has a coin. It's a uh, it's DNC coin. It, it, it's just a different sort of thing that he's shilling, right? Different power. Yeah, like I don't the know, coin guess. pop. If you have any uh, good questions, hit me. But uh, otherwise, I'm going to take our good advice and, and not spend our time on news porn. And you guys can worry about getting the direct mail out. Out of all of SciVive, what was your f what is your favorite section? I know it's all good. I've read through about well, basically 80% of it twice. Um, what's your favorite part about it? I think the relationship stuff is the best stuff. But I think it's also the majority of the content. I mean, uh, like, 
mind, body, spirit is very light compared to uh, relationships. So there's a lot of... Uh, there's a lot of unique stuff in there that it could really help a lot of people in their lives that uh, just doesn't come up on Twitter, you know? Like, because they stick you in a pigeonhole. They're like, if you tweet, like, for instance, unboxing videos. Tons of people are very successful with unboxing videos. None of them buy as much stuff as I do, but I don't have an, a successful unboxing career. Why? Because I've been browbeaten by my community and that they hate it so much and they're not only allowed to talk about crypto things that I've been deprived of any form of box opening greatness not that it would work right like it might not work but it might work you know i just got a shopping video with 10 million views on it that i you know like that's pretty good 10 million views is pretty good avid hex you have a question for richard hi richard and hi everybody so i just had a quick question i was just wondering what we as hexicans can do to get a better outreach i think i think that you guys are doing pretty good you're just falling into local maximas like so basically we've already beaten twitter to death and we have already beaten youtube up a little bit and tiktok we haven't snapchat we haven't and direct mail we haven't and so you know hey uh I want people to be able to buy this cool new thing, and I want them to be able to buy a lot of it. Okay, well then, who should you not reach out to? Probably the guys that are down 95%. So, like, the guys that are down 95% have, you know, 20x less purchasing power than the guys that, you know, are pre-wrecked. They're not wrecked yet. So, like, the... Uh, now, I'm not sure because it's the everything bubble, right? Like, I guess everyone's kind of wrecked. Like, all the tech stocks are wrecked. But, but people don't, they're not really wrecked. So if you look back a couple of years, like, oh, it's back to two years ago price. Well, that's not very wrecked, is it? And that's the majority of, it's a majority, it's like Hex for sure. And it's uh, a lot of tech stocks, right? You're like, oh, you just went back to two years ago price. And so if everything just goes back to two years ago price, you didn't, you didn't really lose anything as long as what you were holding went down as much as what you wanted to swap it for. As long as they both fell at the same rate, you actually kind of broke even. Now, there's a lot of, like, you've got to do a lot of math to figure out what you have and what you wanted to have. And in the end, a common numerator like the U.S. dollar is, is useful for uh, unit of account things as far as currencies go. So it's just like, I. so the summary of my point is that you should focus on low hanging fruit in communities that you haven't yet hit, right? So like funding gym hits the real estate guys. We don't really have anybody hitting the stock guys at all. So we don't have much crossover with stocks at all. Meet Kevin was the closest thing we had to that. And that scumbag uh, was a, a direct investor in uh, Celsius and, uh, or BlockFi, I can't remember which. BlockFi, I think. And, uh, you know, got wrecked as he deserved pink haired idiot i told him directly to his face uh you shouldn't do that and uh, he's like no i like middlemen i give middlemen my money oh well the middlemen took all your money dum dum how do you feel now yeah so we don't have we don't have anybody like hitting the stock guys funny jim does the real estate guys i guess uh yeah there's other verticals we're not hitting like where where are our hot models? We don't have that many hot models, right? I'm not saying it's a big demo, but like the bikini people are in there, the the makeup people are in there. Don't they want to get rich? Don't they want to have you know like the opportunity to to not have to work anymore and to you know have self sovereignty and have censorship resistance and all the nice things crypto has to offer? Yeah, they probably would like some of these things, you know. So why don't we get more of that? I think that's a hint. You and I need to go hit up the model community. <laughs> well, I try and hit up the model community pretty often, but I usually leave crypto out of it. I'm usually, uh, I'm there for a more personal mission. <laughs> but yeah, like it's, uh, it's, 
I don't think anyone else out there has something better than we have. I, I don't. If if you put a if someone put a gun to your head and they're like, all right, someone has to hundred x their money in the next bull run, and you're like, well, I uh, with a gun to my head, I think it's a Richard Hart product. You know, I, I don't I don't think uh, Ethereum's going to do hundred x the next bull run. I don't think Bitcoin's going to do another hundred x. But I think the Richard Hart products are much more likely to. So. Now, no financial advice. Why do I say this? Oh, because free speech is dead in America. So, you know, you, you can't speak your mind. You have to always hedge it with a million disclaimers. Not financial advice. I've been, you know, guys, how long I've been doing that? I've been doing that for six years. Long time. Long time tap dancing. So, yeah, go reach the underserved communities and uh, focus on what works. So, direct mail, underserved communities, ones you haven't already beat the heck out of. It's like, see what works for other people. Perfect. Thank you for that yeah. answer. <laughs> My pleasure. And then we got Buck Fiat, and at the top, this is the official Hex Discord that is actually at the Hex.com site for anyone who wants to go there. You said we all have something to shill. That's the official Hex Discord. And Richard, we would love you to Discord go in there. We so know much. you hate Discord. Oh, I know I you hate it. it. I know. I, know I absolutely do. hate Discord so much. I, I promote Telegram. <laughs> Discord's an abortion. I did promote that while you were gone. So, uh, so we got to Good t.me backslash Hex Crypto. No. And Pulse Chain Com and Pulse X Com and Richard's Calls. So, yeah, like, you guys are doing good. I, I think you're all, like, wonderful folks. I just, I hate when my community gets punked. So, like, I see these free Hex giveaways or free Pulse X going giveaways all the time. People fall for it, and then uh, they lose all their coins. And then they cry about it. And then, uh, you know, guys that, like, I, I got banned right before I was going to talk to Elon. That's troll. So, like, whoever did that, just do not engage. Ghost. You don't, like, I'm not saying their name. You're not going to say their name. They get ghosted. That's it. No like, no follow, no subscribe, no banter, no back and forth. They just don't exist anymore. Then you go spend your time engaging with other people whose communities you don't have yet. Who, who might turn out to be good people, you know? Or even if they're not, at least they have a new community you don't have yet. Hey, Richard, you uh, there's a lot of people speaking really well about you in the last uh, Elon spaces, and obviously this one went sideways. I noticed that um, he who must not be named is actually listening. Is there any possible way of you guys uh, clearing up this the spaces? Just because he, Kim had a lot of nice things to say to you in the previous spaces, and now it kind of went a little sideways. Well, I mean, specifically, this is personal glory for him. He wants to be more popular. He doesn't like the United States government. He doesn't like how he's treated them uh, or how they have treated him. They've basically been trying to ruin his life for, I don't know, 10 plus years now. And they're a very easy target. You know, the American government does a lot of things wrong all day, every day, as do a lot of governments. So I get all that, you know. But you have to remember what, what he, his end goal for you is to get you into BCH products. And so he's always tweeting links to BCH things. And he's direct messaging me to try to get me to buy BCH. I chose not to. I unwrecked myself. I'm a genius. So you, you have to try and think about what people are trying to get you into. Mario's going to get you into NFTs. Uh, Kim is going to get you into BCH stuff. You might not even know what BCH is. Good for you. Lucky you. Congratulations. It's, it's better that you don't. And then uh, I'm going to get you into Hex, Pulse X, Pulse Chain. And if they, I think if we check the charts, uh, my thing won. So go me. Thanks for mentioning that, man. I just wanted no. to say that. And, and it seems like as far, as, as far as the removal goes, like he, he likes me as a person. He likes my intellect. But he also knows I dominate conversations. And he wants to dominate the conversation. So, you know, it was easier for him to just ban me 
than it was for him to just hope that I that I was going to do what I was going to do, which was just that three thing that I told you. That's all I had to say was, I, I think that you should directly message your superior ideas instead of hoping that free speech does it for you because you're going to be extremely disappointed. You used to be able to say more spicy stuff on the internet and politics wasn't any better. So you have to directly promote the stuff that's better. You can't hope that free speech does it for you. It's a, it's a very poor substitute. And so like, I understand his game, but like then after to like spite me to then also troll my users for engagement, it's unforgivable. Right. So like it's, it's, you, you, the person that got screwed the hardest here was Elon. Elon doesn't have a fucking thing to teach me, nothing, but I have shit to teach him. So the, the best thing, like when I met Anthony Robbins in person and told him, Hey man, you should work on longevity. It took that fucking idiot 20 years before he started doing it. And now he's 20 years closer to death. So he could have accepted my awesome advice 20 years fucking earlier, but he was too stupid to, and this is not a stupid guy, right? He's the most successful success coach. But had he fucking listened to me 20 years ago, he'd be better off now. And the same would go for Elon. Elon, you're not right about longevity, and you're not right about the free speech thing. You, you, you misallocated your resources. You should have let Twitter continue to suck, and then done what the Koch brothers did and promote your own ideals, or done what George Soros did and promote your own ideals, because in the end, someone has to do that for free speech to work anyway. So it's like you bought everyone cooking pans, but they need cakes. Like You, you have to... The, the only good part of free speech is the part that advertises superior ideas and everything else is horror or, or an insurance policy against totalitarianism, right? In theory. So like, it's just, so basically like I do not need Mario's users or Kim's users. I wouldn't mind some of Elon's zillion users, but I don't need them. Right. And, and for me, it's like, I also don't think it's too healthy to go on a too anti-American bent because you just get butt hurt, right? You're just like, oh, you know, I have to go get vengeance against them now. But there's no them, right? This is like this vacuous, amorphous thing that you just generally have hatred about. And what you learn is like a lot of times for you to be, for you, for you to have uh, more privacy, you have to be less private. And if you have more freedom, you have to have try, you have to try less to have freedom. It's counterintuitive. Like if you, if you try to use a phone that doesn't have any tracking software on it, you're never going to use a phone. This is not going to happen. If, if you try and only use companies that don't abuse your data, you're never going to use any companies. And so, you know, you, you have to find this middle ground where you pick your battles, you pick the hills you're going to die on. And being anti-American ain't the hill I'm going to die on, you know? Because what does that do? I mean, I, it, we, but you'd be better off moving to a better place as I did decades ago um, than you would be trying to fix that place. It's too hard. I wrote a whole book about it, right? It's called Fix the World. Feel free to read it. Uh, I don't think they did an audio book for it yet. It's like, and it's on t.me slash scivive, S-C-I-V-I-V-E. So I just, I don't fall for like, I know what the game is. I don't need to play the game. If I cared... They're playing the wrong game. Trying to make Twitter spaces successful isn't even going to work. It's going to die like Clubhouse did, in my opinion. And, and I, what, do you, what, would, what would you prefer? Okay, Would you prefer to hear what Elon said in a two-minute snippet from the conversation? Would you rather thro- scroll through four hours of space and the app crashes? I'd rather just hear the snippet. So audio snippets, which you can put, put on Snap, Insta, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, massively dominant um, viral technique compared to, oh, look, we just blew four hours on this thing. And the only utility it has is someone's going to grab a snippet from it. I mean, the only other side utility you get from this is like, if you're impressive enough, some people follow you. But who gives a shit? Like, I was there, right? Like, I was sitting, like, it's, this stuff is all pussy stuff. This is not hardcore stuff. Successful direct mail campaign that could reach the planet is hardcore. This bullshit social media stuff, like after five or six years, I still only have a quarter of my followers. Total and complete failure. Like the, this, these numbers are not reasonable, useful. They're trash. 
I know, I know it seems like I should be proud of them because like they're higher than other people in my space, but they shouldn't be happy with them either. This is, this is not successful engagement. This is not successful on-ramping. This is screaming to the same people that we already know. They, like they, they already know us here. We are a known entity. We run Twitter. Like with t- crypto Twitter X dominated it. And Paul's chain will likely dominate it even harder because all those other scumbag influencers have bags. And so they're going to be like, yeah, you know, hey, before I, before I dump my bag on you, uh, here's something nice to say about this thing. <laughs> That's what they usually do, right? So, like, I, I can't speak well enough of when I used to have a car stereo store, I had an advertisement in the local bargain trader classified ads that said punch 800 watt amplifier, $375. Actually, I think it was $190. If you wanted the real punch amp, you could get it for like three seventy five. I think my cost on it was three twenty five. But then I'd usually try and sell it for like four thirty five. But if I had to come down the price, I'd do it. So there was an eight hundred watt RMS amp, which was enough for four twelves, which no one had. And there was an eight hundred watt max amp, which is enough for two twelves, which everyone had. So what everyone really needed was the eight hundred watt max amp, not the eight hundred watt RMS, which is sixteen hundred watt max. Because they would just blow all their speakers. And so you use the ambiguous language of 800 watts. They don't know whether it's max or RMS. They have to call you. That's your clickbait. And then you give them the best deal they can get. They can't get it cheaper anywhere else. Brand new product, can't get it cheaper anywhere else. What do you want? So it worked. And that would bring in customers for years. Years. That is the kind of durable, long-lasting, affordable, useful, synergistic marketing that I like to see in the world. Here's the right product, not the wrong product, and here's the best price. Let's go. And and that's what I look for in crypto. And it's uh, it's not Twitter spaces. In my opinion. Cuz like I it's like the rest of the community saying, I've been dominating them and and then, you know I picked up what 10 or 20 key users and okay, cool. I'd rather like focus on other stuff i'd rather make it i'd rather get my museum done which by the way is slow going it's like ugh. well if we didn't notice uh forbes just listed hex on there and i did contact the person whoever uh had an about hex section on there it's full of issues bro like richard hart did you know that uh that hex is on 30 exchanges you talk about hex being on coinami wallet and then it can go on electrum what? No, none of that. Sounds true. a little weird. Yeah, so I'm I'm sending them all uh, an email, send them my uh, phone number. We're we're I'm gonna get that thing fixed because whoever did their research did a horrible job at putting that up there. And a lot of us are shilling that uh, link out there for Forbes, and it's full of issues. So I think I, think I gotta that, wait till uh, Monday. I think well, that's awesome of you to do that, man. I I think we're all gonna have a much easier time uh, spreading the good word when. The prices are just flying up. So I I would love to be able to call the bottom. You know, I'm tired of all these failure announcements without dumps. Like, hey, do me a favor, market. The next time you have a company fail, uh, can we get some price dump too? <laughs> but that's the funny part that I try to explain to people is like when these companies fail and the coins get seized, unless they get sold, the price doesn't go down. Like the only reason the price goes down is because people that were going to get money from that service now have to sell other crypto if they had any outside the service. So I read articles in the newspaper that's like, oh, you know, crypto bros are selling their G-Wagons and you're like, well, it's too bad they're not selling their coins. <laughs> let's get let's get this 85% dump done with and go back up, you know? <clears throat> Our next question is from... Richard, doesn't our... Here, one second, guys. Richard, doesn't our user growth compared to everybody else's user growth carry more weight? Because when you get into Hex and crypto <coughs> and your ecosystem, like we're there for years and years and years, and our economic energy doesn't just go to zero on a whim. So people joining our community, whenever we slam up against other communities, we are winning. It doesn't matter what their higher numbers are. Ours are legit. That's what I yeah, think. but if they're if they're ultra wrecked, what are they going to do? Switch teams? You know what I mean? Like they don't have any money left, so now they're going to buy in with like their 
their nickel or whatever, you know? And, it, and it's like there's nobody harder to on-ramp than someone that's already in crypto because they think they know more than you. And you're like, no, in fact, you don't know anything about anything. But when I'm done showing you how dumb you are, you're not going to learn and change your behavior anyway. So, like, it's just it's hilarious to me. But like, if Elon and I had a chat about Doge, he would still come away with it being like, yeah, but Doge to the moon. I'd be like, yeah, okay, dude. That's not science, bro. That's feels. You're promoting bad tech. Stop. Not good, not good science, bro. And then, like, uh, it's just... I know people that have on-ramped users for hundreds of millions of dollars. And uh, is it plural? I don't know. Let's just call it around 100 million bucks, something like that. You know, they weren't a crypto, bro. They're a normal business, bro. So I think you're more... It's, If Celsius leaked their whole email list or like their, their whole like customer list, if someone direct mailed their whole customer list, how many of them are unwrecked and would on ramp? I don't know. Maybe it's a lot. Maybe it's not. It's hard to say. But Exians are less likely to get wrecked when they do eventually join. I'm just saying like when we meet up with other communities in Battlefield, if they get 200, they're, like they're not going to get more I agree. than we no, get. I, I agree. Yeah. I agree that when that we when we go up against other communities, we win. I mean, that's I agree with that hundred percent. That's the reason the Bitcoin guys gave up. The Bitcoin guys used to talk so much crap. They just gave up. There's like three left talking crap. <laughs> that's it. The rest of them gave up. They lost. It's like yeah, you used to be able to buy hex for one satoshi. What is it now? A hundred satoshis. I don't know. Let's go look. I'm afraid to alt tab. Does someone else want to uh, to look and see how many satoshis a hex costs? Yeah, I'll take a look. All right. You'll be uh... <clears throat> here, uh, Richard. It's uh, Marco. Um, I'll make this really, really quick. Um, you already know how I feel about you and everything that you do. <coughs> and I'll um, chat everyone here. Love you guys. Keep doing what you do. Um, Look, Richard, I know today what happened in spaces deep down inside probably stings because, you know, you went out of your way the past month or two, giving Mario and the other dude, you know, help and doing spaces and educating their people and just people in general. And then for them to pull that, that rug under you, it's disgusting, man. But um, the only thing I want to say to you, dude, is please don't stop the spaces. Please don't stop spreading the word. Um, I don't know if you noticed, but every time with Mario, these guys end the spaces in the comments below, there's so many people that say, hey, I don't know who this Richard guy is, but he won my heart, he won my ear, et cetera, dude. There's a lot of people out there that need to hear what you say daily, continuously. So please don't stop. Like I said, I know is when you start building a relationship with people and when they fuck you over or they screw you over, sometimes you just don't want to do it no more. But um. You know, we got your back, bro. Just keep doing what you're doing. Uh, Paul Shane changes all this, right? Take your time. When Paul Shane comes out, it's going to change the game forever, dude. And these people are going to be knocking at your door just to have you, just just to hear you speak for 30 seconds. They're going to be begging you, dude. Don't forget, you know, the, this pain that, that you're probably feeling inside. And, you know, we don't forget this stuff. You know, hexagons, we don't forget this shit. So keep doing you, dude. We got your back. Much love. And just wish you the best, man. Thanks, bro. Yeah, like, I have been banned so many times that I'm 100% used to this. And I've been dicked around for the mic before. I'm used to it. And and I and I went into Clubhouse and was instantly banned. And like when I I am so used to this, I literally am unaffected entirely. Like I could not care less. And and even by the way, like even had I spoke to Elon, the person that got fucked over was him. He's the person that's getting starved of a better future. I'm the one that knows that he should be focused on medical research will save him and his kids' lives. He's the one that's fallen for the pro-death trance of, yeah, yeah, I, I don't want to get bored, so I should rot to death instead of choosing my own way out. Stupid. Retarded. Like, <coughs> undefensible. And then he also has crypto wrong. And he, you know, also shouldn't have banned Kanye. And et cetera. Like, there's a lot of stuff I could help him with. And he would understand the logical arguments. And particularly, like, bro, you need to advertise the ideas directly yourself. Free Spain Shake going to do it for you. He, these are things that would have helped him. It wouldn't have helped me. Fuck all. I already know them. What's he going to do to help me? Say Doge to the moon? How the fuck's help me? 
right? Like it's not. I don't. I'm. I don't know of anything Elon could personally do that would actually help me personally, unless he started promoting stuff I cared about. Like that's it. So the person that got fucked over is Elon, not me. I didn't get fucked over. So like I just. I look at these things long term. I don't think these spaces like I I K I get it. I'm unramping like some okay users, right? But like this it's not enough. It's not fast enough. I don't give a shit. Like it's not it's baby small time stuff. You know? I'll get more press from the Richard Hart Museum than I would out of ten spaces with Elon. That's it. It's factual. That's the facts. You know? I I got more press out of eating expensive caviar and making fun of people getting wrecked in the bear market than I got out of creating a 10,000 X crypto or raising 30 million for charity or, you know, you, you got to play the game the way that it actually works. And the uh, Twitter spaces ain't, I mean, like I'll do them fine, but truth be told, why don't I just publish my book and go on a book tour? Seem to work for Jordan Peterson, right? We say half the same crap. Why don't, like there's just, why don't I go create a referral network and, uh, and have everyone else spam my crap everywhere. Worked for uh, Tate. Oh, okay. Well, there's two things that work better than like picking it up an extra two or k three, two or three k followers off of spaces. And where you know, it's because I'm not. Yeah, go ahead. Can I say a couple of things? Yeah, there's some people waiting. Thank you very much. Oh, thanks, Crypto Seven here. Thank you very much, Richard. It's a real thrill to talk to you. We've DM'd before, but I've never spoken to you IRL. That's fantastic, Richard. The bull market has started for your ideas. The bull market has started for self-sovereignty. The bull market has started for self-custody. Trust Wallet Token, where you can pick up Hex, by the way, everyone, is at all-time high today. The market has endorsed your ideas, Richard. Um, I totally agree with your comments about spaces. In fact, we were saying the same on Crypto7 just a couple of days ago. I have this thing like spaces, but where we can see you and hear you better, and I was wondering, I also got a bunch of questions. I was just wondering, boss, if, if by any chance you'd also like to maybe pop on, on my channel sometime and do an interview. How many followers you got? I got six and a half thousand subscribers. It ain't many. No, <laughs> I, I, usually had it. Yeah. I, I do actually reach some other parts of other... Did I, I accidentally try, I tried to mute my mic and it clicked mute everyone. How stupid was that? You have to un... What a piece of crap app, dude. The button for mute everyone is exactly next to the button for my mic. Okay. okay. I'm back on. Yeah, I have oh, six cool. and a half thousand subscribers, but I've got the I've got the highest weekly view rate numbers. I get I've got sixty seven streams that have achieved that have achieved between three to ten thousand views. So I get quite good engagement, Richard. Can I butt in and just say Buck said he sure. came up for a little while, guys? What's yeah, up? Yeah, hey. Hey, uh, Richard, yeah, look, I uh, want to look. I haven't even done a stream on my own channel because I've been sure. not at home, not building stuff, right? Like, I, I, I haven't been at my normal streaming studio, so I've been like in hotel rooms, so it's just been harder for me to stream. Sure, it was just a thought, anyway, but it's fantastic. It's well, dude, I, you sound like a nice it. guy, I'd Thank like you. to do it. Um, so I'll do it, just wait till okay. I have a stream set up. Thank you very much, that's fantastic. Thank you, man. Cheers. Thanks, Katie. Hey, man, can I ask you a question? Good. Um, I think this is the first IRL uh, question that I've asked you. I asked you one in 2020 about um, that I was maxing out my credit cards to buy Hex. Worked out perfectly. And you told I me probably, not to, but it worked out. If you out. asked me about that, I probably told you not to do that. You did. You told me not to do it. I did it anyways. Thank God I did. <laughs> um, anyways, I wanted to ask you, um, what do you, what would you say now in 2022 bear market to the people, to the newcomers um, saying, you know, is this the end of crypto? When will the, like, what, what's the next step for a bull market? Dude, this is the exact same thing crypto always does. It goes up three years, down one year, up, up for three, down for one, up for three, down for one. There's nothing new. Everything drops 85, 95%. Okay. All the, all the centralized crap goes out of business. Yep. We've seen the same show three cycles before. So this is exactly 100% standard playbook. The same playbook I've been advertising for years. I predicted all this would happen. 
it happened. There's nothing unexpected here. Do you think it'll change in the next few cycles, or do you no. think this is no, the trend? I, don't. For I do not the next think it's going to change. I don't think it's going to oh, change. Okay. Cool. Cool. Just wanted to get your thoughts on that. Yeah, you, you, if you get to buy the world's best performing asset at a massive discount. Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, my credit cards are on it. <laughs> Before anybody else skips, maybe we could just go to the hand holders up. And uh, yeah, Buck, you're up, man. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, I appreciate it. Uh, Richard, I've been listening to you uh, for five, six years now, since 2017. And, uh, you know, it's worked out really well for me. I, I, I just want everybody to know that, you know, you, you taught me. Uh, about many things, uh, you know, how to use MetaMask. Um, you helped me stop being a, a Bitcoin maxi um, and expl- and showed me that, you know, Ethereum actually was doing pretty useful stuff. You taught me about DeFi and all those things. Um, so I've had a very good experience uh, listening to you. But the thing that I think is your true genius isn't isn't your crypto or your or code or anything like that. It's It's your values. And I really think right now, uh, the zeitgeist is actually open to hear your values. And it's it's sort of a once in a blue moon type of thing where all these guys tried all these things, CFI uh, related, et cetera. Um, and they've obviously been destroyed. And I really think um, the world needs you right now. And and I think these, these Twitter spaces, I want to push back on you on this. I think you need to keep going and you need to be loud and vocal um, about your values. You don't need to talk about hex. Uh, just talk about your values. They're amazing and and they're right. And they, and they resonate with guys like Kim.com uh, who's here listening and, and, and other people. Um, and, and I really want you to just keep going on these values because I think right now it, it's this kind of once in a blue moon opportunity. If you think about the ancient Greeks, the Spartans and the Athenians, they used to kill each other all day. They, they were always fighting, but every once in a while the uh, Persians would try and invade Greece and they would get together and they would actually, try and repel the enemy. Um, I think DeFi is, is uh, going to have, um, unfortunately, be the scapegoat for what's all the sins of CeFi uh, in this cycle. So I think you can actually find a lot of success just talking about your values and being vocal and being available to these guys. And uh, I actually look at everything you're doing with these Twitter spaces as a massive success. You were this close to sparring with the richest man in the world today. Um, so I really want to encourage you to keep doing your thing. It's, it's really amazing. And um, I'm, I'm here to help. Well, I appreciate the kind words, man. Now, out of curiosity, why do we got speakers with hands up? I mean, they should be able to just speak if they want. Like, hot you can just talk if you want, right? Hi, Rick. <laughs> well, I'm in an echoey room. Because I, I want to make sure they, so the hand, so the hands is just like, you want me to notice and say you should unmute? Is that what the hand means? It's supposed to be yeah, like I think a that's how people organization, but I talked to okay. DMs and said. I thought I thought it was like a space. hard, like I can't speak, let me speak kind of thing. But apparently, it's just like a you want me to call you out thing. <laughs> well, kind of like, there's a cue, I guess. <laughs> um, I have a quick question: What's going to be in your museum? I'm going to put like the Louis Vuitton light up bags, Louis Vuitton uh, airplane bag, this 40,000 euro, Lady Gaga, Don Perignon sculpture, this like $6,000 Moncler light up Palm Angels fiber optic jacket I got. I don't know if the security's, I don't think the security is good enough to put the world's biggest diamond in there or to put $10 million of Rolexes in there. Because it just sucks up so much space and it's such a hassle to do it. Like, I, and then if you get robbed, it would suck so bad. I guess it would suck less if you're insured. I don't, I don't know how the insurance is going to work out yet. So, like, I th- I'm thinking of just like scaling into it. It needs to. So we've already got the space, but we need to to get it outfitted as though it were a store. So I need a lot of well lit cabinets with locks on them, so that people don't just jack all the stuff. If you go to your local Louis Vuitton, they're going to have three full-time security guards guarding the stuff, and that's what they use uh, in lieu of having actual locking glass cabinets. Whereas jewelers um, have less security guards. They'll have maybe one or two, and they'll have locked cabinets, and they'll use a more secure method of like displaying items. So 
it's kind of like i hate enslaving humans to like do stuff that sucks like guard stuff just sitting around it's kind of really sucks for the human so i kind of rather have the mechanics do it so i've got to find a shop fitter that wants to build out some relatively you know secure hold 100k worth of stuff uh which is the same problem jewelers face right like this is so so a guy that's used to outfitting jewelry shops should be well enough uh good enough as a job and have done a job similar enough that he should be able to outfit the museum in a secure enough manner where I don't have to have too many guys guarding it. And we're still going to need one guy uh, to let people's uh, tickets get checked in. So like it's two floors. So the bathrooms on the, the upper floor and then if someone pays and goes in and then they need to use the bathroom, someone's going to have to like verify that they had a stamp and let them back through, or maybe they could just, it's, it's a question of like, I can use a normal turnstile that controls human movement if I don't need re-entry. But if I do need re-entry for like bathroom use, then I kind of need a human to inspect a stamp, like a nightclub, which is a little bit clunkier, a little bit, a little crappier. Um, I'm a little bit torn on that one. And then there's other issues like get a liquor license, don't get a liquor license. How much space goes to the pre area for the retail and the uh, the cafe stuff, and and then where does the turnstile go? How how far into the space do we eat? You know, for the museum, what's the entry fee for the museum? Is it fifty bucks, forty bucks? What is it? You know, it's some of these issues are like unanswered, and I'm still waiting for a lot of security things. So like nothing can go in there until it's quite well secured. Because is this something that people might be able to donate to? 501c ish. I didn't go. I didn't go that route. In in theory, I just want to get it up and running, and like worry about the uh, the angles and the tax advantages and like government rebates for like educational stuff. And like, I don't want to focus on all that. I just want to get it up and running so that I can you know do the next thing. So like my, I would be happy with some human access control, some normal jewelry store, retail lighting and uh, like product display and without the stuff getting stolen and just filling it up with other stuff is awesome, right? Like I think these speakers are the best in the world. So here they are. And you know, like I guess there's going to be a section about me. I've literally put no thought into that, but it's what everyone else does. So like if you go to Montagnier 30 or 10, um, which is uh the main Christian Dior store in Paris, you know, and you go upstairs to this apartment for the super VIP guys that they brought me to. Um, there's like a whole thing. I'm like, here's Christian Dior and here's when he started it. And here's some pictures of his old ass and look, it's all black and white. He's so old. And you're like, yeah, well, okay, cool. And so everybody does this. Like they, they want to show you the history and the dude that found it and all that. I think it's stupid personally. Um, like that guy's not here. He doesn't have anything to do with the products being built. It's like the multinational conglomerate that owns it, like may have totally different values. It's just, I think it's stupid, but I'm still here. And the stuff that I built is still here. And like, it's like whenever people, people always say they want to hear more about me and like my feelings and like my personal crap. And it's so alien to me, but I think I need to have at least a section in the museum that addresses that. Like, where did I come from and where am I going? And I'd, I'd prefer, like, if you want, if you go there, I want you to see stuff you couldn't have otherwise seen. I want you to hear the best sound. I want you to smell the best smells. I want you to see the best stuff. And I, I would prefer you leave there a better human being than you entered. And I'm not sure exactly, you know, most museums don't do that. They don't try and make you better people. So also, gonna... 172 sets. That's what we're at. I figured I'd wait until we got a good well, break point. 172 yeah. sets. Yeah, so you used, to buy, you used to be able to buy Hex for less than one set. Now it's 172 sets. Bitcoin users wrecked. Sorry, guys. You lost. We won. 172x in the bear after 95% drop. What's up? And it's the same with Ethereum. You used to be able to get 2,000 Ethereum for one Bitcoin. Now you can get 20. 
What's up, Bitcoin? What's up, bro? You don't know how to math? You know math? Stupid people. Oh, by the way, people that have me blocked. Mashinsky, founder of Celsius. Block me. Uh, who else? Coindesk. It's got me blocked for years. Who else? Zero Hedge. Years. Five years. Blocked. What about uh, Michael Saylor? Blocked. All these losers. The losers block me. It's like, what? <laughs> Maybe you guys should uh, unblock me so that I could educate you so you could suck less. How about a Richard Hart amusement park? And then instead of Walt Disney, it's you, boss. It takes too much time, and it's already a pretty well-served market. Um, there was actually, like, the Japanese... I think Japanese Universal Studios wanted a business pretty hardcore. It's not like... It's not... It's not a guaranteed win. It would be hella fun to design. Like that would that would be great. Like if you're into creating experiences for people, you can move them around more. You know, you've got more space to work with. It's just kind of higher risk, moderately higher reward. I, mean, I would also wish my movie would come out already. Like, dear movie, come out already. Let's go. You know. I don't feel like waiting another couple months. I want this movie to be out already. Um, yeah, like it's sometime in the future, Pulse Chain, Pulse X, Hex will be live on their native chain things, you know, like you're going to have Hex on Ethereum Network, Hex on the Pulse Network. The mo the documentary will be out, the museum will be up, and the bull market will be on. And you'll be like, yep, that's going to be a great time. <laughs> it's going to be a fabulous time. And uh, the only things holding us back right now are, you know, the impending recession, if impending is even the right word, which is probably already here, um, the pivot, which is usually followed by the actual crash, which is a little bit weird. Um, and then, you know, I think 85% dips and NFTs going near zero. That's how we usually bottom. That's what the bottoms usually look like. Um, except the interest rate part. So we've already kind of like hit the time frame where, you know, the last bear market lasted a year. Well, it's been a year. It's been a year since the second top. So if I, if there, I'm, I'd love the price targets to hit. I'd love some of these coins to get sold. Some of these, you know, Finex hacker, Silk Road hacker, uh, I'd I'd love to see that grayscale discount go away, et cetera. Right? I think I think things like that would make me feel a lot more comfortable calling a bottom. I don't think the bottom's in yet. I think there's uh, more doom. I don't I don't know why we wouldn't drop more than eighty five or at least eighty five as we have always done. So, hey K four, I see your hand, buddy. Yeah, I just wanted to say, because to jump on what Buck said, trying to encourage you to do more spaces, I would want that as well, as I think many other people, 600 people in here. But it's not just like this ephemeral Twitter space. A lot of us Hexkins also, you know, we have YouTube channels, so we make it evergreen on our channels, basically a podcast. The two-hour one that you did, where you we were only in there for like 30 or 45 of the two hours, got... 22,000 views in like a few days, which sure. is like more than most of the stuff in crypto YouTube right now, at least for our channel sizes, you know. Nice. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. So yeah, it's not, I mean, it's like I said, you can snip evergreen content out of these things. It is doable. Might as well, you know. The other thing that, the other thing that worries me is like, so I'm looking at our list of like listeners here, right? I think that the algo might sort them by, I might be totally wrong about this. I think the algo, if it were smart, would sort them by like follower count, but it might sort them by like whether you follow them or not. And since I only follow yeah. hex maxis or rh maxis, um, I don't, I don't know that I have an accurate picture of who is actually listening here. Yeah, so, are, are we reaching outside of our own community? Did I not put the right keywords in the? Uh, at the in very the bottom title. of the thousand people, those are people that might not be logged in, but they're still listening. And so you have a whole list of people that are listening, but then that thing that oh. says the bottom, it says a thousand other listeners. 
they're not logged in. Right. I feel you. Oh, I'm jealous of you guys, the not logged in guys. So, like, everything's going to be good. We just have to wait a little bit. We are. We have put our work in. We have. Uh, we have thrown the die. The die is cast. And uh, I think where it lands is going to be someplace very beautiful. I see someone else got their hand up, Mister Jawa here. Go ahead, buddy. Hi, Richard. How you doing tonight? Doing good. Good. Um, <laughs> it's a little off subject now, but uh, you were, uh, you know. T- talking about Elon and uh, I just wanted to get your viewpoint on you know he's kind of propped up WeChat quite a bit uh, and he likes it and he wants to see Twitter do things like it and uh, you know I don't know if you noticed Stu Peters got completely forever banned off of Twitter um, because of his jab video that he put out on Rumble and uh, I just uh I worry about the future of free speech. Uh, It's kind of like really important to me and a lot of us and for us to keep uh, propping up Elon. And if he's just some Trojan horse, bad actor and wants to impose, you know, social credit systems and, you know, shut you off. And I just, I want to see how you feel about that. I I think his intentions are good. Often, I think he's got crypto entirely wrong, but you know, him wanting the world to be a better place and wanting free speech and you know, wanting quicker, safer cars and you know, wanting to be able to travel the stars and stuff. I think the star travel is stupid. We're going to be dead and rotting um, because we decided to like spread our eggs in a different baskets instead of watching one basket carefully. Um, the basket I'm in, particularly, so like. I don't. I don't think he's a Trojan horse. I. I think he is against the current power structure. I think he is trying to do things right. He. He under his understanding of what WeChat is is quite different than other people's. So he's looking at like a, a computer science guy, right? Hey, look, it's an app that does more. Okay, well, why don't we have our app do more? It seems like a no brainer to anyone that has any app, and so anyone with any app wishes it could do all the other things. But the technical realities are that this app that we're using now had a duct taped on voice chat feature added. It's buggy as all heck. Kind of works, you know, but truthfully, this should probably still be called beta. It's not production ready. This is, this is not good software and he knows it. So it's like, and fine. I would still use it in beta anyway. Fine. Um, yeah, so now you're gonna add real time chat to it. Okay, like you're gonna get more moderation now. So like, if you have a moderation team, now they they are gonna have to deal with a hundred x the posts. Good luck, right? Not not as easy as you think. And and you want it to do it's so it's just not it's not easy. Let me put it to you this way. I think I think I have the perfect logical explanation for you. It's so hard to build Twitter. That he would rather pay forty four billion for it than to build it. That's how hard it is to build. And then using that same exact logic, it must be really hard to build WeChat's other components also. So it's it's probably you know. Now he's already kind of got one part of the uh, of the the puzzle here. So he could add features to this easier than having to on ramp a whole new user base as well. But like. It's, it's. I wouldn't be surprised if you never saw another feature added to this thing. I mean, he used to own PayPal. And how'd that work out, right? Like, they just never added another feature. Now his argument will be like, he stopped owning it, right? Like, he sold it, and then they just let it decay. Um, yeah, like, you know, Reddit added, uh, like, you know, coin payments to their thing. I don't think anyone ever used them. And, and maybe, you know, maybe only certain communities enabled them. But, like, it's just, you, you probably don't have to worry about Elon actually making this WeChat. And if he actually did make it WeChat, you probably don't have to worry about it looking like the Chinese version of it. Because the Chinese version of WeChat would probably look a lot like the American one, except they don't have pure capitalism there. So, you know, if... 
basically, if you just remove the word WeChat from his statement and just said, hey, let's add payments and live chat, okay. Is that a, like is that like a Trojan horse, you know, demonistic? No. He just wants to add some other features that other products have to his product. Like it's What if one of those features is, you know, verification, kind of like Facebook did, you know, where you have to be who you say you are. You know what I mean? And well, then, I wouldn't like that. Yeah, I don't, like I don't think anybody would, right? Um, yeah, you know, but I mean, it's a parade of the bad actor. There, like we can't, we can't just the the guy bought, the guy literally is like attacking the government as we speak. What more do you want from him? You know, like <laughs> I mean, I want him to stop lying. You know, like he's well, the only which thing person do you lie about. He's the only person that I'm aware of that's been able to edit a live video on YouTube with SpaceX and uh, keep it up as live, not lose any of the likes. It's uh, provable. Well, I can show you. Least of my worries. I mean, I'd be happy if he just doesn't take everyone's Tesla cars and drive them into walls. Okay. <laughs> if you if you if you want to have if you want to have the parade of fear porn and like. Oh my God, we really have to worry about this guy. You could probably just overheat everyone's batteries and blow everyone up, all right? You just blow up all the parking lots of the world. Is that good enough for your porn for you? Or just have the Tesla drive you straight to the precinct and arrest you, <laughs> lock you in. <laughs> See, you're an example of the guy that's less free because he's focused on freedom. You probably watch so many videos every week about how the government is screwing you. It's probably the majority of the content that you watch. You're not lying there, buddy. <laughs> I know, because it's fun to do, right? Like, I've been there, man. It's fun to do all this outrage porn shit. That's why I watch zombie movies. That's why I watch the world ending movies, because it makes me more important. Now I matter. The world's ending. My decisions matter. Like, oh, my God, I would do this. I would do that. Like, it, I do the best and feel the best when everything's going wrong. And so I'm so lucky that I don't just create wrong situations. Like, it's like lucky me. I don't have, like the hero complex or whatever. So you, you have to get out of that mindset and, and realize most of that shit ain't never going to happen to you. The zombies aren't coming. You don't need a bug out bag. The, 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 the Russians aren't coming. Like all that shit is a huge waste of time and you would have been better off doing something else. And it's just like futurists, like futurists, like, oh, you know, the future is going to be so beautiful. It's going to be so perfect. We're going to have robots make all our sandwiches. Hey, man, I'm hungry as fuck. Where's my robot sandwich? No robot <laughs> sandwich to be found, bro. It's not here. But all those guys spent all their time talking that shit for decades instead of building a fucking robot. So they, they substituted building the robot for talking about the robot. And it's the same with this fantasy of like, you know, hey, we'll be more we'll be more secure if we should talk Elon enough. It's like, no, dude, you probably don't even have the features set on your Chrome browser right. Let me give you a tip, everyone listening, okay? Richard Hart's gonna help all you guys be smarter guys right now, especially all you conspiracy guys. Go into your Chrome. I don't use Chrome. I bet you do. I bet you're lying. I bet you do use Chrome. I bet you use Gmail too. Go into your Chrome and go into settings and type auto. And then it's gonna show you the Chrome automatically sends every URL you type to Google because it's going to, quote, autocomplete for you. And how does it autocomplete? By sending a record of every URL that you're even thinking about typing to access to the mothership. But you can turn that off. You don't need Google to autocomplete your URLs for you. And it'll autocomplete from local history. You don't need it to phone home to the mothership. So just go into your Chrome settings, turn off the autocomplete URLs, there you go. You're all more secure now. You didn't have to shit talk Elon. You no longer have to give Google your entire fucking URL history. The same history your ISP already has. Google doesn't also need a copy of it. And there's a million other tips like that, right? So like, <laughs> maybe a million is too large a number. but I'm, I'm, It's like the fear porn and the news porn and, and the seeing what's going on in the world if you deleted it all from your life and actually focused on doing the shit you know you should do anyway, like not being a fat fuck in my case, or uh, you know, the million things that's on your to-do list that you haven't done. My to-do list keeps getting longer. Never gets shorter. Only longer. Which kind of sucks. It's, it's not a fun feeling. I just have to be like, yep, I'm just never going to get to that. Oh well. Never going to get to it. 
I don't. I don't want you guys to live in. Uh, you, you'd be you. You'd be better off learning to play a musical instrument and getting laid more than you would having a bug out bag. What's a bug I'm out so bag? Glad this is, I'm so glad this is recorded because I'm gonna come back in five years and I'm gonna point after the point nuclear the holocaust record. and be like, "You I'm see gonna... that, Richard? You see, I escaped the the, the mushroom cloud because I rode my bicycle that didn't use gasoline." To my tree fort. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's a yeah. this this propensity for human beings to do the conspiracy thing is hilarious to me because, like, we have real conspiracies, and they're open and they're in front of you. Google reads all your email. Is that good for you? Uh. Anyone could subpoena all of your uh, communications because uh, you leave them on other servers. Is that good for you? Oh, uh, hexagons in the United States are being... Hexagon YouTubers in the United States have apparently received subpoenas from the Securities and Exchange Commission asking for copies of their communications with me and uh, for their bank account balances anywhere in the world and their crypto balances. And then they, like... They get legal counsel, and from what I've heard, their legal counsel tells them you can either ignore it and wait till they get a real judge to order a real issue. Now, look, I'm not a lawyer. Don't take my advice. Okay, it's not advice. Not a lawyer. You get your own lawyer. And apparently, there was like a crowd fund, and everyone's lawyers already paid for or something. Go look into it. I don't know. Gary Funding Jim and Hexologist and uh, RG3 did something with like helping everybody pay for lawyers or something. Um. Are non-American hexagons having this crappy chilling of free speech, First Amendment violation, uh, overreach, fishing expedition crap? Are non-American hexagons having a problem? Nope. Apparently not. Just the American ones. Now, I don't know about you, but I left America a long time because it was too violent for me. Miami, very violent place. Criminals are very violent. Cops are very violent whole lot of violence to go around. I don't like it. I don't like feeling that if I get pulled over, it's almost like death time. And earlier today, I was just scrolling around, and I was watching videos of cops having to defend themselves against criminals that just started shooting them. Pull them over, start shooting at you. That's, I don't want to participate in any of that stuff. So if, if you're someplace that the, the criminals are that violent, then the, the police have to equal that violence to stay alive. And I don't, you know, there's a better world out there that doesn't have those problems. And so I like to live in the places where I'm not going to get shot to death. So I'm just pointing out the solution to a lot of what ails America is outside America. And the American dream is alive and well, a lot of places that aren't America. So some people have moved to Puerto Rico. Now look, Puerto Rico probably has, you know, in the non-gated communities, if you're rich and moving out of Puerto Rico, you're probably living in a gated community. It's probably no crime there. If you're living in a bad neighborhood in Puerto Rico, I'm sure you could find a bad time if you wanted it. I've seen some real messed up videos there, some gang shootings that were like crazy. Um, but not paying any capital gains tax sounds pretty cool too. Right, but like if if you're, you're only... Uh, guns uh, out there are the government owned then it just gives them free will to you know trample on your rights so you know that's why a rate of imaginary horribles but there was a there was a country music concert in las vegas where guy emptied 2,000 rounds of ammunition over 30 minutes into the crowd and they didn't have that in australia as a matter of fact they didn't have that anywhere else in the history of the entire world they just that had that in the good old United States of America. And your counterplay as Mr. Oh my God, I have a concealed carry permit is you're not allowed to bring it to the concert where there's alcohol. And you wouldn't know that where the incoming fire was coming from. And if you did know, you wouldn't know that you actually have to shoot lower instead of higher when you're at that giant incline. And you couldn't return fire with a pistol at that distance. So it's entirely retarded in this instance, there was absolutely positively no counterplay for you at all, at all. You, 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 like, it was over for you. 
you, you get annihilated, everyone near you gets annihilated, and you carrying a gun doesn't mean anything at all. And no one else in the world has that problem. Nobody. So, as a person that's done a lot of gun shooting, uh, yeah, I like guns, but in the countries where they got rid of them, everyone has less bullets entering their body. Now, maybe one day there will be a horrible totalitarian government, totalitarian government, and maybe they'll take over. And maybe the thirty thousand years, thirty thousand gun deaths a year in the United States are an insurance policy against that type of totalitarianism, or maybe it's just stupid. The other countries figured this out. Like, like it's just like education. The other countries figured it out. You don't have to pay for it. The country pays for it. It's not be- like the American system sucks. Oh, look, everyone's in debt. Why? Because we made education too expensive. Why? Because we made it a for-profit business. Why? Like, it's it's not even, like, capitalism doesn't even help education. Education just gets worse every year. Like, the, the people just choose between suck school A or suck school B. They both teach you useless crap. You're like, well, uh. Anyway, it's the parade of imaginary horribles and the fear of that will, like, make you ignore what's obviously working for the rest of the world now. The rest of the world has less school shootings. Period. That's it. Yeah, but you can't Everywhere. still carry in a school, right? I mean, all these major shootings happen. No, but that's, that's such a fucking cop-out. Let me tell you why that's such a fucking cop-out. The cops that are trained and roll up are too cowardly to get into that fucking Wild West gun battle anyway. And so the concept that, like, if more kids had guns, you'd have less school shootings, it's like, I don't know about that, dude. No, but there's it depends if the kids are getting laid. That could just be security for these schools. So, I mean. No, but I'm just saying, like, every I time I hear about a school shooting, it seems like the guys whose job it is to protect the kids' lives do a pretty faggy job of it. And then they it rely, have to rely on somebody else jumping over a fence and, and going into the hot zone themselves when they probably shouldn't to do what is supposed to be done and take out the threat. So, like, I'm very unimpressed with the deployed armed resources at schools thus far. I mean, unless you've got a... Bad guys can always get guns, though. That, like, you'll never stop. Yeah, that. that's like, bullshit. Like, illegal or it's not. not fucking true. It's not true, dude. It's just like it's this concept that there's not that magnitudes don't exist like it's binary. Let me tell you, it's easy enough in the United States for eight eight for like eight year olds to get guns in Chicago and show YouTube videos of their guns and flex them and be like, yo, look at our guns. Then it is for Australians to do that. Australian eight year olds ain't got no guns. They don't. They're harder to get. It's like Australians, cocaine. the ones that got forced to jab. Those yeah. Australians? Yeah, those guys that fuck that up. Yeah, that's right. Because you can fuck up one thing, but not another thing. This is what I mean. Like, you can't ignore amplitude differences. So you made a blanketly false statement that criminals can always get guns. No, they fucking can't. Because there's more criminals than they have supply. Every criminal that wants a gun doesn't get to get them in some countries. It's, it's much harder in the UK to get a gun to do crime with than it is in the United States. Which is why they love to stab each other over there. Because <laughs> it's harder to get guns. I'd rather get shot than stabbed personally. I've been stabbed. so. <laughs> Dude, then you need to learn the lesson that the best way to control your safety is through what you have physical proximity to. The problem with you and the bullets is that you're too close to the bullets. You need to be farther away from them. And, and you could do that by moving to a safer country. The, the statistics don't lie. The United States is not safe. You get fucked up there. Period. I know. <laughs> like, I know a lot of people. I know people have been shot. I know people have been killed. Like, it, yeah, you will get fucking killed there. I'm not, I'm not party to that shit. I, it's not what I want for my life. There's other places with better statistics. There's a whole branch of science called sociologists, and all they do is measure the difference between one place and another. And let me tell you, there's a whole lot of places safer than the United States. A whole lot of them. A whole lot of them. And you can make up all the fan fiction theories about why that shouldn't be the case, but the measurements say it's the case. Australia is mean, safe for the United States. Canada is safe for the United States. What? These vaccines, though, these vaccines are the, the main issue now. Like, now we are probably the last bastion that could actually fight against forced vaccinations. And it's probably on the yeah, table for that. But you didn't. 
and you wouldn't. So now what? <laughs> like, yeah, and we had like, all the guns in the oh, world. We didn't do a you, single thing over yeah, here. You, you had all the guns in the world, and you sucked that middleman D nice and hard. I didn't get that shit. A lot of other people did. But I, but look, I had the freedom to not have to travel. There's a lot of people that had to travel. <laughs> Man, they had it rough. Anyway, so don't. This dude's an example of what it's like to think the zombie movies are going to go real, and you allocate too many resources to that shit. Look, I could be more secure, but it, it, I would get less done in the world. I don't need to open a fucking museum. I don't need to be on a Twitter space right now. Like, but I want to have more impact in the world. So I'm willing to trade a little bit of my personal sovereignty, a little bit of my personal security, a little bit of my anonymity. Well, I guess a lot of it, all of it, I guess in order to make the world a better place. And the world has rewarded me in kind. And, and I think it's a superior way to live your life than to go the other route and assume all the bad things are going to happen and they never do. They never fucking do. Everyone's prepared for the zombie apocalypse and they're going to die with a whimper of cancer and heart disease just like their parents. They're preparing for a future that's not coming to kill them and they're totally ignoring the future that is coming to kill them. And it's, and it's a side effect of masculinity, basically. We are, you we are might ready think for differently war. if you had kids, though. I'm just going to throw that out there. If you did have a kid, you might think differently. Yeah, maybe. But, like, how? What? Like, like guns more? I like guns as much as you can like them. I don't know. No, it's just about, you know, the state of the world that our kid is going to, you know, live in. And I don't like where Europe or the rest of the world is going, uh, much less the United States. So, like, there's no good option here. The yeah. option is to get rich enough to go wherever it sucks less is your option. That's it. why I put in uh, my 401k, entire 401k, into the sacrifices. Freedom it's, of speech. It's, <laughs> the, it's like, it's unfortunate. It's too hard to change these big inertial things, and you just have to kind of go where they suck the least. Because they're just too heavy. You can't move them. You can scream as loud as you want. It's like... I was in Costa Rica one time and uh, I was doing some scenario shooting and we were doing at the range. It was like near a farm and somebody left the gate open and this big stupid cow was like walking around the range and I'm just like, Hey cow, will you move? Cow did not care about what I said or did at all. Cow is like totally disrespective of my existence. Didn't care the smallest bit. That's what governments are like, dude. They just don't care. It doesn't matter what you do or how much, how loud you yell at them. They don't care, you know? <clears throat> I'm not a fan of cows. They seem very stupid to me. But I saw a but picture we... of one singing to music or something. Cool, man. Well, the one I met was stupid. Did you know all cows have a, a best friend? Like every cow has like another cow or maybe a dog uh, that it considers its best friend? I like that. That sounds. I feel better about them now. My pro mammal stance is reinforced. <laughs> I'm full of random uh, stuff, but I'm gonna uh, stop talking because I'll just keep now. talking to you, brother. Okay, All right. man. you have a good night. So, do a lot of the Americans? Because I'm uh, from America. Do we just fall into the idea that you know you get rid of the guns and criminals still get guns? That's just programming. I mean, it is true for probably like a medium amount of time, but it. <laughs> Dude, it's, it worked everywhere else. It just did. So, like, it, it that basically makes moot all the other cool theories. I'll give another example. I'll give, I, I'll, give, I'll give an example. I was quite young. I have an argument with a guy. I said, you know what? The reason that harsher penalties don't work is because no one thinks they're going to get caught. I thought that was a good argument. I like, oh. Okay, good argument. Gonna win this one. Uh, and then he said, "Well, yeah, cool story, bro. But uh, how come there's like no crime in Saudi Arabia where they chop the hands off?" And you're like, "Oh, shit. Yeah, you got me. My bad. I was wrong. <laughs> I guess harsher penalties do work." So you know, <laughs> it the, the the fan fiction shit has to lose to the reality. And so the reality is that there's quite few gun deaths everywhere else that's a westernized nation and the only place where you're getting the living crap shot out of you is the united states and that's it and that's the measurements so if you're tired of getting living crap shot out of you you got to do what the other countries did 
is it unfair? Does it suck? Yeah. Uh huh. Yes, it's unfair. Yes, it sucks. Does it work? Yeah. Yeah, it works. And that's it. Like, but like, I, I, that's not a hill I'm going to die on. I, I'd rather have 30,000 Americans die every year and like me slightly more because I wasn't going to make any difference anyway, you know? And I like guns anyway. So, but if you have the opportunity to go to places where the stats are better, you will have better outcomes. That's it. It's unavoidable. You, you, the odds apply to you. So, if you could be the American president, would you be the American president? Would you want to run for president? Yeah, sure. I mean, more power, cool. Give it, but it's not happening. We got some couple hands up. Buck, what's up? We got Steven. We got Hivid. If you guys want to sort out who wants to talk first. Uh, I'm happy to go first. Uh, sorry, Hivid. Um, Richard, uh, just I'm, I'm a little bit concerned about uh, DeFi being the scapegoat for everything that's happened in the shadow banks with Celsius and BlockFi. Yeah, um, it's crazy. Well, it's like, guys, look, DeFi is the solution. CFI is the, the disease, the cancer. The solution is on chain and auditable instantly, always. So we have the solution. They have the problem. I've covered that in the spaces. They they know. Well, one guy in the space today that I didn't get to get in get it into it with said, Oh, you guys didn't self police. Like, what? Yeah, we did. Self police like hell. That. People chose not to use it. People chose to, to, to use the thing that isn't police. They chose to use the thing that isn't audited. They chose to use the thing that's not software. They chose to use the human in Bahamas. Okay, well, we don't, we don't, you know, the human guy in the Bahamas is not DeFi. So there's a conflict of interest with the Bitcoin maxis. Uh, Kim's listening because uh, they don't like DeFi because they don't have smart contracts, um, and so they're, uh, they're. I think they're more likely to promote actually. Uh, draconian regulation against DeFi, which i which i think is something we need to work on with these guys yeah for sure you, yep they're re- they're willing to shoot themselves in the face despite like they're willing to cut off their nose despite their face they're willing to attack the thing that makes it so like if you're willing to incur bridge risk then you can turn your bitcoin into wrap bitcoin dump it for a stable coin on ethereum and then you don't have the bridge risk anymore and, you know, lucky you, right? So you could have bridged your Bitcoin uh, to the Ethereum network using RenBridge. Yes, you've got some counterparty risk, but apparently no one's ever got burnt by it yet. And that counterparty risk, you can time limit to a very short period of time. So you can put, you know, let's say you want to take 100 Bitcoin, send one, wait for it to go through, dump it, send another, wait for it to go through, dump it. Then you've got one hundredth, one one hundredth the risk because you scaled it over time with no AML, no KYC, no sign up, no middlemen, no loss of privacy, no identity theft. Pure win for Bitcoiners because of DeFi, not available to you otherwise. And they would cut off their own nose to spite their face because they're idiots. Do you know why all these Bitcoin guys that steal this Bitcoin? lose all the Bitcoin they stole because it's too hard to get rid of. It's not an actually free and open currency. You have to suck middlemen to divest of it. <laughs> sucky, sucky. And that's the reason that all these guys that hack all these Bitcoin from exchanges are stuck with it because they can't reliably, safely get rid of it. It's hilarious. I think you'll get everything you want, Richard, if you just uh, you know go and explain your values and talk like you just did there. And explain how DeFi is actually going to make Bitcoin way better, just as you just did perfectly. Bro, um, I think I can't wait for can Ethereum this. to flip Bitcoin. It will next bull it run. Will. It will. And we and we and you and I were both there. We were both Bitcoin maxi sort of oh. in 2017, and we moved on, didn't we? Yeah, um, you're like, hey, so. this thing has limp gains, no roadmap. Devs are leaving it left and right. Uh. Uh, no on-chain exchange, no anonymity or weak anonymity. Well, uh, sounds like crap. Why, why would I buy that? I don't get it. Why would anyone buy it? Do we have better stuff? But Richard, what, what what's good about cryptocurrency? What 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 are we actually able to besides gains, which we all like? But what what is it actually good about this thing fundamentally? Uh, well, how it does should, this improve the it world? Should, 
It should cause less war because the governments go to war with money they stole from you. They just didn't steal the money. They stole the value of the money by counterfeiting their own money. They don't need yours. Let's go print their own out of thin air. So you should get less war because you'd have to have a war tax to go to war. And people would say no. And then you won't have the money to go to war. Then you won't go to war. So, you know, you'll have less misinvestment and mall investment if uh, you can't just steal the value of everyone's money hidden behind the scenes and give it to your cronies. And they get it first before the inflation. What's the cancel loan effect? Where the guys that get the inflation, the inflated money first, get the full value of it. And then once they've driven up all the prices, the guys that get it last after the money multiplier effect, uh, they get the least value from it. So... So it can be a check on bad behavior by government. That's is is that one thing yep. that uh, that yeah. crypto can help us with? Yeah, and there's multiple bad behaviors. So counterfeiting your money to blow people up that you've never seen before is one of them. Uh, another is uh, censorship. So you like guns? You want to buy guns? Government had a pr- program called Operate, Operation Choke Point to make it so that you couldn't buy guns anymore. You also couldn't buy adult services. You also couldn't buy. Uh, you know, some stuff that actually sucks, like uh, payday loans and things like that. So it's, it's, that's not how they're supposed to do things, you know? And cryptocurrency solves a lot of that stuff. Like China makes a lot of stuff illegal they shouldn't. Cryptocurrency solves some of that stuff. Same with all these people getting robbed. So when they when you when a person goes and robs a bank and steals all the money, it was because of the commingling of funds that made it a spicier target. When a person goes and robs a safety deposit box, and this happens, sometimes banks get robbed and all their boxes get emptied. It's the commingling that makes it a spicier target. With self sovereignty and everyone holding their own coins, it reduces the single point of failure where it's a spicier, juicier target because everything's sitting in one spot. So it reduces people's uh, desire, so to speak. I, I think that I think people have figured out how to hide their dick pics, and they can put their private keys wherever they put their dick pics. And then, for most people, that's enough security for most folks. I put my dick pics in KDP's uh, direct messages, uh, so I probably shouldn't put my wrecked private keys. You're there. wrecked. Don't send your private keys there. <laughs> also, just so Thank everyone you. knows, Twitter Spaces is broken, and so uh, Katie cannot uh, invite people to speaker. So uh, if you have questions, shoot her a DM. Otherwise, uh, don't have to yell at her if she can't invite you up. Hey, it's okay, guys. I got great news. I'm going to go to sleep. <laughs> and apparently, because this isn't a smart platform, uh, if I go to sleep, this thing dies and it's over. Yeah, Isn't that how it goes? There's no continuity. Definitely how it goes. Yeah. Well, I'd love to have what one last thing platform. for everyone. If all of us can just say, we love you, Richard, all at once, have it into space like that on a recording. <laughs> all right. I'm ready. Three, two, one. We love you, Richard. Love you, Richard. Love you, Richard. We love you, Thanks, Richard. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Thanks so much. I appreciate talking with y'all. And I wish Woo! you the maddest of gains, everybody. Ciao, y'all. We appreciate it. Free Julian Assange. Hex.com.